Hey guys, Paul here from Maytech, and today we're going to look at my new toy here, this 50 watt CO2 laser. I picked this up a few weeks ago from a guy locally, he had barely used it, and I've spent the time kind of getting to know this laser and learning the ins and outs, and I thought I'd kind of share for with you what I've learned. So I decided I'm going to do a series here, and it's going to cover everything from the air assist to the exhaust system, to the cooling system, to aligning your mirrors, to focusing your laser, and even the software. In this video right here, we're going to focus on kind of just a general overview of the CO2 lasers, particularly this laser here. And I'm also going to do a comparison between CO2 lasers and diode lasers. This is what is up here is this my old diode system here. And I'm going to do kind of a comparison where the two are the same and where the two differ. And there are a lot of differences. So before we get into this video, I'd really appreciate it if you guys would subscribe to the channel and click that notification bell. All right, let's jump into this. So the first thing we're going to do is a comparison between this CO2 laser machine and the diode machine. As you can see right off the bat, this CO2 laser is considerably larger than the diode laser, even though the work areas are actually relatively similar. These diode laser systems use this little di laser diode up here for the laser engraving. So it's a very compact system where the CO2 lasers use a large CO2 ball that sits at the back here and a mirror system to reflect the laser onto the bed. These CO2 laser systems also have a movable bed which goes up and down. So this lets you accommodate different sizes of material. The CO2 lasers also have varying types of control panels, so you can control things like power and speed right at the machine. The CO2 lasers are also encased, which makes it easy to vent the smoke outside with them. Well, these diode lasers are not, so you're going to have to come up with your own method to vent out the smoke if you don't want your room all filled with smoke from them. So I found these CO2 lasers to have a lot of advantages over the diode lasers. They're faster more powerful, more accurate, and have more features, where the diode lasers clearly win in size, but also in price. If you're looking for more of a hobby machine, these diode lasers are a really good place to start, but if you're looking to do more production work, more professional work, then you're gonna wanna jump on to a CO2 laser right away. All right, let's get looking into the features of this CO2 laser. Okay, let's start off by having a look under the hood here. Now the first thing I should point out is this is an entry level laser system. It's basically just a step above the K40 lasers. So if you were to buy a more expensive laser, you are of course going to have more features on yours. Here you got the laser head and this is kind of the business end of the laser. This is what does all the work, all the engraving and cutting for you. And it moves on an X and Y gantry system as you can see here. So one thing you should note is that your work area is smaller than your table area below it. So as you can see as I move this laser head over and down, it doesn't completely cover the whole table below it. On this particular laser, I have a work area of about 30 by 45. So you're going to have to take that into account when you're buying a laser that you have a size that you can actually work with. Another neat feature here is you have this little hidden panel here that you can pull off and it reveals a little clamping system. And this little clamping system lets you clamp little small pieces of work, just like so, and holds them tight for you. So if you have a little project you need to engrave and it's just a small piece of wood, this is actually a perfect little add-on that most of these laser systems actually have built into them. Now the last thing I'm going to show you is that this laser has a nice little work light built into the back of it and it's turned on and off with this little switch here on the panel. Alright, let's uh, go ahead and start looking at how you remove these panels on the front. All the panels on this particular machine that are painted black actually come off for servicing or to reveal features. These panels come off with these little latch systems that are on each side of them. Here's a better look at this little latch system here and they're just a spring-loaded clip that moves in and out like so. You might want to give these an oil as it makes them easier to operate. Now to access the latches on this bottom panel I'm going to need to lower the bed and I'm just going to use this little switch here that automatically lowers the bed for me. 
Once this bed is lowered, you can remove this bottom panel by using the same sort of latch system that was on the top panel. Now I'm going to go ahead and raise this work table back up. And once I get it level with this slot that's at the back of the machine, I'm going to show you another cool feature that this CO2 laser engraver has. Once you get this work table level with a slot at the back of the machine and you have at least the front top panel off, this machine now has a pass through feature. And this lets you take pieces of work that are larger than the machine would normally fit and actually pass them through the machine. This pass through feature not only lets you work on much larger projects, but also gives you the ability to do production work so you can feed in a piece, cut what you need, then feed in more of it until your board's all done so you don't actually have to go over to your miter saw and cut everything to size just to get it to fit your machine. Okay, let's go over and look at the front control panel. Here we are at the front panel. The first switch you see here is the emergency stop switch, which is pretty self-explanatory. Next to it is the light switch, which turns the light inside the laser on and off. Next to that is the lift switch, which lowers and raises your work table. Here you got the laser switch, which turns the laser on and off. And next to that, you have what they've labeled a strip switch. And this switch actually turns on and off a two port power bar that's at the back of the laser. This power bar is to power accessories like your air assist and your water pump. A lot of people have said not to use this because it hasn't been wired very well. So I have not used mine. But if you want to use yours, just make sure you check over the wires properly before using it. Just below that front panel, you have this USB port which lets you connect your laser to your computer so you can control it via software. Here on the top of your laser, you have the panel that controls the power of your laser. Uh, these buttons are in percent, so you have 10% plus or minus, 1% plus or minus, and then 0.1% of percent plus or minus. Next to that, you also have a test button that you can test the laser with, and it has a little light next to it that lights up when it's actually being tested. At the top here, you have a little temperature panel which shows the temperature of the CO2 bulb which is at the back of the laser. Typically, you want to keep the temperature in the lower 20s Celsius if possible. Here we are on the right side of the machine, and as you can see, this has a different latching system. This uses these little key locks. So your machine will come with a bunch of these keys, and you simply unlock certain panels to access them. Just like so. After the panel is unlocked, you can see it's just held in place with these little pins at the bottom of the panel. Once inside, you get access to one of your mirror assemblies and the stepper motor that controls the X axis on your machine. This also gives you access to one of your Y rails so you can get in there and both clean and lubricate this part of the machine. Here we are at the back of the machine and we'll look at the bottom area here first. Here you got the connector for your power cable. You have an auxiliary ground cable here which you should hook up to kind of your house ground or into an actual real ground. Here you have another switch that controls the laser power and the two auxiliary power ports that are used to power your accessories if you decide to use them. Here on your other side, you have your exhaust fan, which you can hook up your exhaust tubing to. Here you got the back of the pass-through area that lets you pass through longer pieces of work from the front. Here you got your water inlet tube and your water outlet tube. These are used to run water from your water pump through your CO2 laser bulb in order to keep it cool. Over here, you have the hose that connects to your air pump for your air assist. Okay, going to the top of the back of the machine, you have another panel which is opened with a key and it once again uses the spring-loaded latches so you can remove it. Once you get the back panel off, you have access to what is the core of the machine. This is your CO2 laser bulb which actually produces the laser that cuts your material for you. You can see where the inlet and outlet water hoses connect to the CO2 laser bulb. Here is where the temperature gauge sensor is attached and reads from. Next to that, you have your water flow sensor. 
This senses for water coming into your CO2 laser bulb. If it's not sensing any water flow, it will not let your laser fire and therefore keep you from burning out your bulb. So it is just a bit of a safety measure built into the machine. Over here in the far end, you have the end of your CO2 laser bulb with lens and your first mirror assembly system. This is what starts the laser's path into the machine. Here we are on the left side of the machine and we once again have another panel that's opened with a key and uses a spring-loaded latch to remove. Once you get that panel off, you have access to most of the electronics of the machine. Here you got the back side of the switches from your front panel. Here you got your DC power supply switch, your AC power supply, the power wire to your bulb with fuse. Here you got the wires that go off to your water flow switch and temperature sensor. And here you got your wiring harness. Down here you have the control board for your machine. You can see where the USB port goes into the control board there. I have the M2 nano board on this machine. What you have on your machine will be variant depending on its make and model. All right, that about does it for this overview, but stay tuned. I have a lot more videos coming out in the CO2 laser machine series. Please remember to like the video, subscribe, and hit the notification bell if you haven't already, and leave me a comment if you have any questions. Thanks.